stops tonight. One of these two teams will be making their journey for the third Final Four here in the Basketball Champions League. Will it be the guests, Nanterre 92, who currently hold the league in this aggregate, or will it be the hosts? Will they make the comeback? Currently down by eight points, having lost 83 to 75 only last week. Well, Jerusalem still have Tenerife to take on, while Nizhny Novgorod need to make a big comeback against Tulna Giants Antwerp. Bamberg have just beaten the champions, Ike, having won by two points and a last shot by Tyrese Rice. Well, there was a man who won it last year with Ike. Kevin Punter simply has led the way for Segrafito versus Bologna this season. And again, he will be looking to push on for a second title now. And you saw Jeremy Gamble. Along with Trebel, who's been leading the scoring so far for Nantea 92 this season. Well, as we mentioned, ladies and gentlemen, Broj Bamberg, having just joined the competition this year, run out victories in the Waka. And they're on their way. Telling the Giants Antwerp will be taking on Nizhny Novgorod today, along with the Berisar Tenerife, who have a two-point deficit against Apo Albank Yahab Yahushalayim. But right now here in Basket City, Italy, it's all about Virtus Bologna against Nantea 92. Well, players to look out for the likes we mentioned, Demetrius Treble, of course, but not to mention one of the hot flying favorites this year, Jeremy Sunglin, really has been leading the way this season for Nantea 92. Very young player, only 24 years of age. And Kurt Palsen being one of those role players, but again, coming off the bench and doing his job very effectively, which has seen Nantea 92 really reach this level. Well, we mentioned a lot about, of course, the likes of Kevin Punter. But again, you got to watch out for the likes of former NBA champion with the Miami Heat, Mario Chalmers. And as we can already see, Alessandro Pajoya will be making a big, big impact, along with Brian Quale, who himself will be making a big impact too. But Pietro Aradori, who's been playing fine basketball for the Italian national team, he will hopefully get his shooting off the mark tonight from the perimeter, which could possibly see Segrafetto versus Bologna come back into this tie. With the home crowd on their back, of course, you know, Virtus Bologna really need to make the most of this home court advantage. They're down by eight to begin this game. So they've got to work extra hard just to get into it. And Jeremy Gamble, no doubt, he will be protecting the boards and making sure that nothing gets out of his way. Well, if you look at the way Nantes started the season, I mean, they lost to Opava, which was possibly one of their biggest losses of the season. But again, they bounced back only in the third game against Telecom Baskets. Bond having been beating on game day two against Iberostar Tenerife. And then again, it was a bit of a roller coaster ride. They saw losses to Pauk. And again, just haven't been able to assert themselves. Une Hulon as well beat them in their own home court. But it was at the end of the season when they started to collectively gather games and start to consistently win, which has seen him get to this level. You can just see behind the bench the traveling set of fans making the journey over here from the northern suburb of Paris. Again, just showing their loyalty and support for this team, and hopefully see their team book a position in the final four of the Basketball Champions League. Well, Coach Pascal Donadieu, having held this position with Nanterre since 1987, having brief stints with the French national team as an assistant and with the under-23 team as well. What a loyal man he's been to his basketball club. Well, Kevin Punter, I mean, go back to last season when he hit the winning three-point against Chaz Nimburg for Ike, which did see them move on to the next round into the quarterfinals, but again, he will be the big one to look out for tonight. No doubt we'll see him get off the mark and get as many looks from the perimeter as possible. Well, 
Well, two-time NBA champion will no doubt be seeing him tonight. He's averaging about eight points per game in the three games he's played so far for Virtus Bologna here in the Basketball Champions League. And no doubt here in his veteran years, he'll be bringing that experience. It'll be interesting to see how Pietro Aridori, again, one of their high-flying players, just averaging under 10 points per game, but a very prolific three-point shooter. And there you can see the home crowd really getting up for the occasion. The famous black and white here in Basketball City in Bologna, Italy. Remember this club hosting some of the greats of European basketball that have gone on to feature in the NBA and having featured players that did play as NBA champions and having great coaches for that matter as well. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we get set to introduce our officials tonight. We're very proud to say the work of our officials this season so far. They've done an excellent job in all of our competitions through the FIBA World Cup qualifiers and now the Basketball Champions League, which they will continue to do so here tonight in Bologna. Well, a man who needs no introduction whatsoever, Coach Alexander Djordjevic, again, having led Serbia to the FIBA World Cup, and what a player he was back in his day. And as I said, no doubt he'll be leading his players on. Shodan Josai, Panayotis, Anastopoulos, Martins, Kozlovakis, coming from Latvia, Greece, and Croatia. And again, we thank you all the work of our officials here in the Basketball Champions League. Well, Manonte, you got to think of the fact you're holding an eight-point lead, and you think for them it's going to be very comfortable, but 40 minutes it's going to be about holding on to that lead, and no doubt the first 10 minutes is going to be about riding the storm. Konate, Trevo, Invenizzi, Paulson, and Singlin all make the starting lineup for Nante, which has been unsurprising, of course. I mean, they've had this lineup throughout the regular season. So it's going to be a matter of how well they come out on the marks and how well they shoot from the perimeter. And again, you got to look at the lineup. Of course, no doubt we're going to see Kevin Punter in the starting lineup for Virtus Bologna. But again, I would be very surprised to see any changes from last week. As we mentioned, Coach Pascal Donadieu, having held this realm since 1987, one of the longest standing coaches in world basketball for that matter. And how lucky he is and Nante 92 to have such a loyal relationship with their coaching club. Well, Taylor Punter, Kravich, and Bayer and Cornu all make the starting lineup for Segrafito Virtus Bologna. So again, for them, down by eight, got to use the home crowd, get them into the game, because they've got to make a comeback. And as we mentioned, Coach Djordovic, the man who needs no introduction, having played for their bitter rivals back in 1994, the way to 1996, playing for some big clubs, as well as a brief stint in the NBA with the Portland Trailblazers, and more recently having just led Serbia to the FIBA World Cup in China. Well, these fans have waited a long time to be back on the mark of European basketball. And for them, it begins tonight. A win tonight will see them go to the Final Four. But they've got to do it down by eight here in aggregate. They must protect home court. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we do thank you for joining us here in Basketball City here in Italy and Basketball City of Europe. Two teams, but it's all about one team tonight here in, in Bologna. And that is Virtus Segreveno Bologna. But the visitors, no 10-92 up in the aggregate by eight points having won the first game don't go anywhere it is the basketball champions league and we are set for tip well i just wonder of course you know how often or how long can virtus bologna keep the crowd in the game i mean really they're going to play off their energy so for them Maybe playing in front of their home crowd could be a little bit more anxious, make them a little play a bit more anxious. But when you play in front of a crowd like this, you need no, no, no motivation whatsoever.
Well, now the players shake hands with each other, pay each other the homage, they give each other the accolades. But ladies and gentlemen, we are literally seconds away from tip. Treadwell's going to jump this one, hopefully. Well, the officials are ready. The ball is ready. It's up, up, and away. And it's Bologna who get the first possession as it goes out of bounds. Now Kevin Punts is going to inbound this one in. Well, Tony Taylor now brings the ball up for Bologna. Gets a hand off a of punter. On the wing now, has to go pick and roll. Not a lot of options. Or well, they get a pass in. Throws up a lob pass in. Just somehow still keeps it alive. Goes in the lob. Doesn't get it. And he goes out of bounds with three tenths of a second to go on the shot clock. We can just see already the aggressive defense from Nantes. Not allowing Segrafito versus Bologna any options on the ball. Well, it's you got to catch a shooter, a lob, and put it up. And Lane's got to go up with it. Gets it up on the way, he still scores it. Well, somehow, some way, with three tenths of a second to go, he's able to get that one. That is a math and buy it. And he gets the first two points of the game now. Jeremy Sanglin on the ball, heavily guarded. Just listen to the jeers from the crowd. Down to Palson now. Palson tries to spin around. Options goes baseline. Gets Taylor, dish it out. Hand the pass to Lane to steal it. And now Kevin Punter hugs the sideline in transition. It's going to be all about tempo right now. And Segrafito versus Bologna just need to get the ball in their half. Play at their tempo. Get comfortable. Tries to pick and roll. Kicks out the punter. They go down low. Kravich now backs down. Puts up a little jump hook. And he sinks it. Nothing but net. And that just gets the home crowd a little bit excited. Well, if you're not ready for this one, if you need a bit of extra motivation, then you're just not up for it. This is the quarterfinals of the Basketball Champions League. Win this game, and you're on your way to the Final Four. Sanglin now on the ball, heavily guarded. Goes in with his right hand now, has to kick it out. And Vinici now steps back, takes a deep, deep three. The three is up, and it's no, an offensive foul's called. Well, oh, Vinici did so well there to come off the handoff. But the three-pointer will not count as an illegal screen was set. We'll have to see the replay of that one, but again, Vinici, what, how well did he do just to get around the dribble handoff? Find the space on the step back, but... Guess we're not going to see the replay of it. Fouls on Treadwell. Punter now on the ball. Gets another hand over Taylor. Taylor now pulls up for a long two foot on the line. Gets it in and out. Can't get it. Rebound by Treadwell. Sutton now thought about pulling up the three. But it's he tries another three. Can't get this one. Kravitz with the rebound. And now Punter can push this one. Punter takes it in with his right. Punter pulls up from 10 feet. Doesn't get it. No rebound. It's under the basket. And now Nantes can just push this one in transition a little bit with Jeremy Sanglin. Sanglin now heavily guarded by Mbaye. And a foul is called on the ball. It's his first personal foul of the game. Well, the foul's on David Cornu. Sorry. So Nantes 92 will inbound this one in the side goal. Gets a handoff now with Sanglin. Sanglin a bit of time. Thought about pulling up for the three, but didn't have any time or space. Palson six on the shot clock. Has to pull up from 15 feet. Palson knocks it, and he gets the M1. And he's going to go to the free throw line now to make it a three-point play. What a play by the big Icelandic. Look at him just come off the screen. Has had his pressure. Nails the jump shot. What a way to settle the crowd down. And Akur Palsen now will shoot this free throw. Well, just gets the free throw to drop. Gets the first three points of the game now for Nantes 92. Taylor gets a handoff now, Punter. Punter comes around, 
in the lane, pulls up from 10 feet. Kevin Punta is simply cash money. Right in the lane, just pulled up for 10 feet. And now 10 92 have got to do something about the dribble handoff. This Kevin Punt is going to be a lot of problems all night as he gets into the lane. Palson on the wing, catching shoot from the perimeter. Doesn't get the three point of Kravich with the rebound. And now Bologna in transition. Well, they're looking for Kravich in the low block. He's got it by Ivanitsi. Kravich goes baseline. He gets away with a travel. Punter, big, big three pointer. Doesn't get it. And a foul is called. It's on number seven, Tony Taylor. Taylor just goes in for an aggressive rebound. And he fouls Lahu Kanote. We can see Kanate grabs the rebound. That's a great call by the official. I mean, he's gone in there recklessly. I mean, he's going for the rebound, no doubt. That's just how you keep the game under control. Well, Sengen gets right by him. Sengen all the way, reverse slam. Doesn't get it. Loose ball of Invenizzi. Kanate for three. It's up. Doesn't get it. Kevin Punter secures the rebound. Tony Taylor comes off another screen with Kravich. Kicks out the punter. Punter down low. And a blocking foul is caught on Hakir Palsen. That's a second team foul for Nantea 92. Taylor now uses the screen, gets around it, kicks in the corner, and Bayer, three in the corner, gets it to drop! Big three-pointer! Well, that puts a bit of breathing space now, as they're down by two in aggregate. Sanglin in the lane, steps back, it's a long two, doesn't get it. Rebound secured by Tony Taylor. And now Bologna can push. Tony Taylor in the lane, looking for a kick out. Now Kevin Punter. It's going to go pick and roll with Kravich. Punting now isolation against Trevor. Pulls up for three. Doesn't get it. Well, the problem for Virtus Bologna now is anytime they take a long shot, it's only Kravich. They've gone under the basket. They can get an offensive rebound. As Sanglin draws a foul on Tony Taylor. Fourth team foul now for Segrafeto Virtus Bologna. Now you can see Jeremy Sanglin just that quick first step. Just able to get by Tony Taylor. And he goes to the bench just to take a bit of a breather. Down low to Palson. Now Palson tries to back down against Punta in the lane. Well, doesn't get the block, but goes up. Treadwell under the basket. Treadwell just too big, just too strong, just too good. Well, goes in for the offensive rebound. Not a single person there able to stop him. Well, catch and shoot from the perimeter. The three is up. It's no good. And again, was that the right shot to go for? You know, if you're Virtus Bologna, you got to get into the rhythm. Let the ball move. Get everyone involved. You can't afford to do now when the trail in the game is to rush shots. It's Treble now in the lane. Treble under the basket to Kanate. Kanate kicks out. Invenizzi in the lane. In the corner, Sanglin, bit of contact, offensive foul. Well, what a defensive play by Mario Chalmers, the former NBA champion. Chalmers goes in, closes out Sanglin. Sanglin bumps into him. Great defensive play to take the charge. Sanglin just pushes off with his right arm, but I mean, you talk about the experience of Mario Chalmers, and I think the officials probably just having a word with him. Not too sure why, of course. Maybe it's something he said, but nonetheless, Chalmers coming in, just doing the job. Chalmers now looking for Kravish down low on the low block. Has to give it up. Down low, the big man. Kravish got it by Trebwell. Well, completely throws it away. I mean, two players are good to hit there. He could have got Mbaya and he could have got Brian Quale, but in the end, got neither of them.
Well, Yuska Vicious now pulls up a three-pointer and he sinks it. Well, what a play by Adas Yuska Vicious. Big three-pointer. Well, he's only just got into the game. You got to think cold ice running through the veins and just able to step up and sink the three. Pump fakes in the lane. What a monster dunk right in the lane. A Martha Bayer just throws it down. Well, that will keep the crowd in the game and just keep the aggregate score at bay. But what a play by the big fella. He now moves up to five points now. Just Kavishas in the lane and carried the ball in the lane. Turnover by Yuska Vicious, and usually one of the most reliable players with the ball in his hands. Just turns it over. Well, there was a the carry. And again, it's not the fact that he put his hand underneath the ball. It's the fact he took two steps while he carried it. Hand over Chalmers now. Chalmers crosses over. Chalmers puts up a little floater. Top of the backboard. Doesn't get it. Quali tries to tip back. Doesn't get it. And it will be Segrafedo, Virtus, Bologna, ball baseline. Well, quali has got to finish that. I mean, he's got Yuska Vicious guarding him. Julian Gamble also checks into the game. Just to give him a little bit of a physicality down low. Mathen Bayek gets a hand off of Chalmers. Chalmers behind his back. Turns it over completely. And now Nantes. And it goes out of bounds and it will be Nantes 92 ball. And you can see right now, Segrafedo, Vertus, Bologna just fighting for their lives. Well, sharpshooter Pietro Aradori is going to come into the game for Kevin Punta. And the thing about Pietro Aradori is when this man gets hot, he can light the gym up with his three-point shooting. Well, we've seen that in his games for the Italian national team during the FIBA World Cup qualifiers. But again, if there was ever a game right now where he had to shoot the lights out, this would be the time. Romero Chalmers now throws it down low. By there's the pump fake. And right in the lane with the throwdown. Well, kicks out now. And Campbell's not going to shoot the three, but Konate in the lane. Konate uses the athleticism. Campbell goes in with a tip up. And again, Segafredo, Virtus, Bologna just don't box out. And they give in. Nolte 92, a lot of options with the second opportunity chances. Well, he hit his last three, takes another one way off the mark. Gamble with a rebound. Gamble's got to go back up with it. Backs down. Well, the officials have stopped play, but again, there's 2.1 left on the shot clock. Now, to me, that didn't hit the rim, so they're going to have to look at the replay, but... You can see what the Nantes bench was looking at was that the fact they felt that the ball hit the rim, which means it should be a fresh 14, but... I'm not sure the ball did hit the rim. So they've reset the shot clock. So apparently the ball did hit the rim. So that's 14 on the shot clock for it. No 10, 92. Well, there was a shot from Jessica Vicious. And you can see it just skims the rim. So it's the right call. There is a little bit of contact with the rim. And they've nailed it down to 11 seconds on the shot clock now. 
Konate now crosses over from the screen from Gamble, takes it in the lane. Euro steps. Gamble under the basket. Gamble goes up with it. No foul called. Well, the rebound by Kelvin Martin. And now Martin in transition. Gives off to Chalmers. Chalmers throws down low to a math and buy it. Well, almost turns it over again. Chalmers down low to Quale. Again, they are so sloppy with the ball right now, Bologna. They just can't take care of it. And it's just turnover after turnover. Yuska Vicious uses one screen from Invenizzi. Invenizzi made one three, it didn't count already. Takes another one, and he sinks it. And he puts it back up at an eight-point lead on aggregate. What a three by Invenizzi. And right now, Segafredo Vetus Bologna have to call timeout. Well, there you can see already only not 10 92 have made the free throw line for one attempt tonight but again both these two teams really settling for long jump shots and three-point shots 42 and 31 percent from the field but Sagrafedo Bologna are five for 12 and again both these two teams as we mentioned not really get into the basket as much as they should right now especially Bologna Well now, Nantes 92, just putting a bit of full court pressure. Just trying to disrupt, and you can see that's not what Mario Chalmers needs right now. Yuska Vicious will try and force him into a bad possession, but Mbaye now gets a handoff with Aradori. Download to Kuali. Kuali backs down. Kuali in the lane, has to kick it out. Two of the shotgun, he's got to shoot it. Martin forces a prayer up, doesn't get it. Kuali with the offensive rebound in the lane. Martin goes up with it, he got, but the tip back dunk by Brian Quale, and he just throws it down. Well again, two big plays right now from Virtus Bologna, just getting the crowd in the game. Gamble gets a hand up with Yuska Vicious. Yuska Vicious in the lane, tries to lay up, doesn't get it, but a foul is called. So he'll go to the free throw line now for two shots. Well, strong move just going all the way and it, yeah, I'm not too sure where the contact is on that one I mean well they've called the foul on Pietro Aradori so it will be two free throws now to Adas Yuska Vicious well he was two for 11 from the field last week he was four for four from the free throw line nine points in total in the 27 minutes he played Again, he's come off the bench right now and he's playing some good minutes so far. Doesn't get the second free throw, but Julian Gamble almost gets an offensive rebound. Aradori now comes off a screen with Quale, almost falls over. Chalmers off the screen. Well, no foul called. Quale down low. Quale's got to go up with a big man just going to work as he sealed off his defender. Brian Quale just doing the easy stuff right now, the dirty work and the low block. Martin Gunn. Well, that's got to be an offensive foul. And they've called it. A legal screen set on Julian Gamble. Well, Gamble just completely took out Kelvin Martin on the screen. And again, it's little errors like that that no 10 92 can't be making, especially when they're leading this game. Just as Jeskovic just comes off the screen, 
just goes in and moves in on Kelvin Mond. You've got to stand still. Let him go into you. Chalmers now looking for Pietro Aradori. Gets it to the big man on the wing. Goes pick and roll with Quale. Quale now top of the key. Looking for options. Give it to Ambaya. Kicks out. Big three. Chalmers wing. Doesn't get it. Well, it goes out of bounds and it will be. Segafredo, Virtus, Bologna. Ball baseline. Well, Martin now checks out the game. Kevin Puntz has just come back into it. Puntz now on the wing. Eight seconds left during the first quarter. Well, Puntz of time on the ball against Konate in the lane. Jumps high. Kevin Puntz right at the end of the first quarter. And he gets the crowd into the game. What a move by Kevin Puntz. Well, it's been a low scoring first quarter. But one thing you can't deny is the electricity in this building. Kevin Punter taking it in, elevates high, and he nails it right at the end of this quarter. Well, it's a five-point lead so far to Segafredo, Vitsus, Bologna. Nantes coming in, just doing the basic stuff right now. But as it stands, they still lead this one ag aggregate by three points. Well, really, neither team shooting that well from the perimeter. Nantes, 92, two for six, well... Bologna, one for six. But again, Monte 92, only two for seven from within the rainbow right now. And they're going to have to change that going into the second quarter. We're going to start the second quarter off right now. And so far, Segrafeto Virtus Bologna just chipping back into the deficit as they were down by eight by the beginning of the game. But Jeremy Sanglin has come back into this one. Right now, he's finding life very tough as he's been guarded heavily by Hammer and Bayer. He's got David Canoe on him right now. Joskovic is in the lane to try a little jump hook, and it's easily tucked away by Demetrius Trebwell. And that's one way for Nantes 92 to respond in the low block. Here comes the dribble handoff now. Quali gets it off to Kevin Punter. Punter trying to cross over now. Six on the shot clock. Got to get something going to the basket. Comes off one screen. Has to force a throw. Kevin Punter is simply cash money. Comes right off the screen and he sinks the tray ball. Well, that's one thing you think about a player like Kevin Punter. He's been there. He's done that last season. Making sure I got to the final four. Konate now comes off one screen, tries to take it in the lane against Quali off the backboard, doesn't get it. They don't secure the rebound, but they get a steal now. Punches in transition. And now Segrafito, Virtus Bologna can punish them. Tries to pull up, another three, doesn't get it. And there's a foul under the basket, and I think he's caught it on Invenizzi. Well, again, now Kevin Punts has got all the confidence. He's going to take every shot he can.
Well, not ten now have to call timeout to make sure they don't fall to bits. But ladies and gentlemen, just listen to these fans. I'm not 100% sure where the contact is there, but... Well, again, you look at the stats from inside the rainbow. Now, Tan 92, only three for nine, 33%. Just not good enough right now at this level. Remember, they are defending. Their eight-point lead right now as it stands, and it's cut down to two points. Kevin Punter just hit that last three for Segrafito Virtus Bologna. And that was only their second tray ball of the game. Well, it's going to be baseline ball now to Segrafeto Bologna. Will they get the ball inbound? Comes off a screen now, has to kick it out wide open. He's got to take it. Bit of contact, and he makes the three pointer. Well, Filippo Baldi Rossi just sinks it from downtown. Only just got into the game, only just played nine seconds. Ice in the veins, and now an aggregate he gives. Segrafredo Virtus Bologna the lead. Well, Jeremy Singleton now four seconds on the shot clock. Got to get something going. Ivan Itzi from the desert. In and out, doesn't get it. And now they can push in transition. It's a three on two. All the way, push stuff. Keeps it alive. Well, Rossi now. We're going to slow this one down. No need to rush it. Down the middle, bit of contact, off the backboard, doesn't get it. Offensive rebound, and he puts it back, and Dejan Kravic just gets it. Another two points for Segrafino Virtus Bologna. Well, ladies and gentlemen, an aggregate is a three-point lead now to the boys here in Bologna. Jeremy Sanglin just finding life. Very difficult, guided by David Canute. Well, he picks up a second personal foul. Only the first team foul now for Bologna here in the second quarter. Well, that's just fatigue and tiredness. And again, Jeremy Singlin's just got to be patient. Just try and find openings. It's Calvin Martin's going to come back in the game now. Well, now Singlin didn't take the three. They go baseline. Trebler with a throw down, but the foul's on the ground. And the basket will not count. That's a lot better now from Nantes 92. Just penetrating into the gaps, making the defense shift over. And again, if you're Segrafito Virtus Bologna, you really just want to sit back and force Nantes 92 into the bad jump shots, but you can see the penetrations making the defense shift over. Sengler now off the screen, now catch it. Tries to go pick and roll with Treadwell. Carlson crosses over, spins to the middle, loses the ball. Well, they almost turn it over again, but they keep it alive, and they do turn it over. Well, sloppy play in the home crowd. Just appreciate the effort. You can see, even though it's going to be thrown out of bounds, Kravitz just diving for it. They get the ball inbound, and Jusko Vicious goes pick and roll with Treadwell down the middle, all the way, gets rejected! Kravitz said, not in my house, and he blocks it off Jusko Vicious, and Segrafino Virtus Bologna are going to get the ball back. Well, Jusko Vicious down the lane thinks, no, signore, no, permite, not in my house. 
And it's now a timeout to Nantes 92, who have to talk this one over. And again, just listen to these fans. Well, already Nantes have six turnovers here in the first half. Both teams taking care of the basketball relatively well, and you think a game like this with the adrenaline's pumping, and the nerves must be going. Not too many turnovers to say the least, but again, San Grafito Virtus Bologna with seven points coming from the bench. Well, Nantes 92, only four. And they need other players to step in and step up right now in a game of this magnitude. Capaletti now brings the ball up as he gives it up to Buddy Rossi. Punter goes back door, punt goes up, no contact, but he makes the layup, and the assist comes from Kevin Punter. Well, Punter gave it off to Calvin Martin, who just made the beautiful backdoor play. And that's now Martin's first two points of the game. Well, Punter now with another steal. Punter to throw through, tries the alley oop, Kravich! Catches the alley -oop and this place has erupted all over. What a play by Kevin Punter. The alley oop sent to Dan Kravich. Look at this. Throws it up, transition, and he throws it down. What a play by Segrafeno Virtus Bologna. Well, this place is just getting out of control. We talk about the eight point lead that Nantes 92 had at the beginning, but right now it is all about the home side. They want to get to the final four. Well, now Hakea Pulse is going to bring the ball up, guarded heavily by Kelvin Martin. Comes off a screen, tries to take Kravich on, hangs in the air, doesn't get it off the backboard. Trevor can't secure the rebound, and now they can push a transition. Tries a Euro step, kicks it out. Mind goes up and it doesn't finish it. And now Jeremy Singlin transition. They got numbers. Invidizzi's got to pull this one out. Singlin now pulls up. Can he get his first three of the game? Jeremy Singlin can't get it. Kelvin Martin with a big rebound. Well, he gives it up to Alessandro Capaletti, and now they can just slow this one down. And again, ladies and gentlemen, just listen to these fans. Capaletti gives up, takes a jump shot, 19 feet, doesn't get it. Singlin with a rebound. And now Nantes have to get back in this game. Singlin crosses over, kicks in the corner, wide open, Paulson for three, six to triple, and that just cuts it to a four-point game on aggregate. Well, again, you can always count on a player like Hakur Paulson step up and hit a big three-pointer. That's his second three of the game. Martin off the screen, gets a hand over Punter. Well, now Kevin Punter just wants to go to work. He wants to take Hakur Paulson. Hesitates, fades, out of bounds, doesn't get it. Paulson with a rebound, and now he can push, and he gets fouled in transition, a blocking foul, and it's called on Alessandro Capaletti. Well, that's a bit of a reckless foul to say the least. I mean, stood still, but he has leaned out. I don't really question that one. Well, now Nantes 92 currently trail this one by four in aggregate, 104 to 100. Sanglin off the screen, gets stripped. Well, it comes out of bounds, comes off of Mario Chalmers. Mario Chalmers now just doing the defensive dirty work, just gets his hand in the lane. And that's what being a two-time NBA champion does for you.
Kicks out in Vinici now. Paulson, can he hit his third three? Paulson can't get it, but he's fouled. And Hacker Paulson will shoot three free throws now after being fouled by Kevin Punter. Well, Kevin Punter just followed through. This is a great call by the official. Well, he makes the first free throw. Again, free throws are going to be so big in this game. They've got to make their free throws. A game like this, you never want to look back and think, had you made all your free throws, the outcome could have been different. He cuts it down now to a one-point ball game. Well, doesn't get it to drop, and now Paulson gives up to Sanglin. Sanglin lays it up in transition, and he puts Nantea 92 up by one point, and it's a timeout now to Segrafedo Virtus Bologna. Both these two teams now six points each from the turnovers, and again, relatively small number. Considering the magnitude of this game, you think about the nerves for all these players. Remember, as it stands, Nantea 92 leading this by one point on aggregate. But Sacrafeito Vitus Bologna leading the second chance points 92, and that's going to be a big stat that goes a long way down the game for them. Aradori Bow backs down low block, makes a bit of contact, no foul called. Well, completely just gave up on the play. Again, he's got to do a better job than that. Sanglin now looking for him. Vinici gets caught up with him by it. And it looks like an offensive foul's been called. What's well, in Vinici again? Again, it's the tangle up he got caught in with him by it. Well, we saw that with Julian Gamble in the first quarter. And Vinici's got to be smarter than that. Can't be giving away any silly fouls. It's cross court now. They go down low to Kravich. Backs down against Trevwell. Kicks out. They go back down the big man. Spins, goes baseline. Takes him on, spins again. Not a jump hook. What a move by the big man. Well, he is just going to work. Damn, Kravich just showing the artistry with the back down post play. Well, gets a handoff now with Hackett Paulson. Paulson now in the lane. Fakes it, goes in with a little hook. And what a beautiful play. I mean, that is Steve Nash-esque going down the curl and just giving it a finger off the glass. Punter gives up to him by it. Now to Mario Chalmers. Aradori now in the lane. Puts up a little floater. No rebounder, but it's nothing but net by Pietro Aradori. Well, this game just going back and forth right now. And Segrafredo Vitus Bologna lead this one by one on aggregate 108 to 107. Well, Chalmers completely strips him. Chalmers all the way. Finishes with a finger roll. Well, Mara Chalmers with the defensive efforts. What a play by the two-time NBA champion. Well, just ripped it right out of his hands. Like taking candy from a baby. Invenizzi pulls up from 18 feet. Six to jump shot. A big shot by Invenizzi.
Chalmers in the lane. Chalmers with a little teardrop off the front rim. Doesn't get it. And Jeremy Singlin now. Well, Singlin almost lost the ball. Tries to go in baseline. Better contact. Has to kick it out to Hacker Paulson. Can he hit his third three? Can't get it. Aradori with a rebound. Well, Aradori pulls up for three in transition. And I was about to say, was that the best shot? But it don't matter because Pietro Aradori sticks it from downtown. And he puts Segrafedo Vitus Bologna up by four in aggregate. Paulson now looking for options. Kicks out to Invenizzi. Down low to Treadwell. Treadwell spins. Bit of contact. Goes up in it. Strong move. Can't get it. Gets his own rebound. Just too big. Just too strong. Just too good. Demetrius Treadwell just going to work. Well, Punta now on the ball. Going to go pick and roll. Punta time and space. Kicks in the corner. Another three ball. It's up. Mario Chalmers. Six it from downtown. Well, excuse me. Sorry. It is Mario Chalmers. What a three-pointer. Well, that's a big three by Chalmers. Under a minute to go here in the second quarter. Paulson blocking foul cold. Well, that is a 15 foul. So now Hacker Paulson will go to the free throw line for two shots. Well, it's a great call by the official. The foul clearly on Amathambaya. Well, Pietro Aradori checks out again while Brown Quali comes back in. Oh, Kelvin Punter as well. Well, Hakia Paulson missing the first free throw. Well, makes the second one. Well, it's a 12 point lead in the game. It's now a four point lead to. Segrafito Vitus Bologna in aggregate. Well, Ponce heavily guided and draws a foul on Quarantine Kane. He's got to be smarter than that. I mean, you don't want to give away any silly fouls now. I mean, he's reaching. You're never going to take the ball off a player like Kevin Ponce, that's for sure. The only way you play defense against a player like him is try and contain him, keep him in front of you. Force him to get the ball up, but you're never going to steal the ball off him. Chalmers kicks it off now. They go down low to Brian Quale. In the lane, draws a foul. Fouls on the ground. That is the 14 foul, so... Well, that's Hacky Paulson's second personal foul, but... Again, it's all the reach and trying to go after it again. Got to play more disciplined defense than that. Well, now you can see they've gone to the big fella. So now they've got Julian Gamble in the game. Ponte gets a handoff now. With Martin. Martin in the lane. Almost loses. He's got to shoot it now. He's got to put it up. Martin, and then the shot clock doesn't get it. Well, oh, just so impressed. He got the shot off, but and now Connor can push. Well, 10 seconds now. This is officially Jeremy Singlin time. Got it by Martin. Steps back, shoots a three-pointer. Doesn't get it. Well, they got time. Chalmers puts it up. End of the half. Mario Chalmers almost got it. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Segrafito Vitus Bologna have responded here in the first half of this game. They currently lead this one 41 to 29, and they lead on aggregate. Well, we'll leave you with some stats and some highlights, but go get a drink, go get something to eat, but don't go anywhere too long, ladies and gentlemen, because we're going to be back for the second half of the quarterfinals between Segrafito Vizus Bologna and Nantes 92. Well, really, right now from Segrafito Vizus Bologna, it's all about Kevin Punta, Dan Kravich for that matter. Mario Chalmers just coming off the bench, but again, it's the size and strength with the likes of Filippo Baudi, Rossi, and Dan Kravich. So far, Demetrius Trebel, only player that's come ready to play for Nanterre. 
Well, Bologna now 5 for 12 from the perimeter, while Nantes only 3 for 11. And 7 for 16 for within the rainbow just isn't good enough. And Segrafito Vitsis Bologna haven't shot a free throw tonight. They are leading the rebounds and the assists, and they do have four steals for that matter. But again, they've got to make sure they control the tempo here in the second half. Well, go get a drink. Go get something to eat. But again, ladies and gentlemen, don't go anywhere too long because we will be back in under 14 minutes for the second half here of the quarterfinals of the Basketball Champions League. We'll see you soon.
anche su tre giocatori diversi è ribassista d'attacco aggiunto e verticalizza come ribassista difensore e facilita il gioco d'attacco perché prende rimbalzo e parte oh, eh, chi si gode intanto questa partita con una certa calma dopo un finale particolarmente ansioso è il Bamberg già perché Bologna è chiaro che debba qualificarsi e aspettare che finisca la sua partita ma c'è già chi aspetta questi sono i risultati delle altre partite e tra i K e i Bamberg c'erano 4 punti a dividere le due squadre prima della gara d'andata è finita con un più 2 con una magia che vedremo tra poco al termine degli highlights di eh, Tyrese Rice non un giocatore banale non un giocatore qualunque non capito un Eurolega con delle magie tra l'altro al forum di Assago quando giocava con la maglia del Maccabi che era di vedere allenato da David Blatt. Ora il suo allenatore è un italiano ed è Pergo, in un derby italiano tra Luca Banchi e Piero da Vanderg, con un finale bellissimo che tra l'altro lo vedremo, Stefano, eh, nessuno dica che la Champions sia di basso livello, perché non lo è, ci sono grandi squadre con grandi giocatori e grandi allenatori. Ma assolutamente, lo vediamo dalla posizione di classifica della nostra avversaria nei rispettivi campionati. Eccolo qua il eh, finale, se poi magari riusciamo a tornare poco indietro c'è il canestro, eccolo qui, tutti ovviamente i compagni abbracciano eh, Rice eh, che con l'entrata mancina, adesso lo recuperiamo perché è un canestro assolutamente pazzesco che vale la pena di vedere perché servono i campioni, qua. eccolo qua, è il canestro che ovviamente fa perdere la partita ai suoi, di fatto non la fa vincere, ma nel computo tra andate e ritorno, questo è un canestro fondamentale, servono i grandi giocatori, Tyrese Rice. Se mi gancio sinistro, il tedesco perfetto, quindi abbiamo il tedesco. Dalla Champions all'Eurolega Stefano, perché per Bologna è importante sicuramente centrare le Final Four. Milano cerca l'accesso ai playoff, Final Four molto lontane, un unico obiettivo nella testa, tante combinazioni, stiamo parlando eh, in quest'ultima giornata, eccola qua che vedremo eh, da domani in poi di un'impresa che deve cercare l'Olimpia di Milano, che in questo momento può sia arrivare sesta, può sia arrivare settima, può sia arrivare ottava ma può anche uscire anche vincendo l'Olimpia ha 45,31% di possibilità di qualificarsi Stefano è sulle 6 squadre che ci sono per percentuali di qualificazione è quarta ci sono tante di quelle combinazioni che anche solo a dirle tutte non ci si capirebbe niente Milano deve vincere e potrebbe comunque non bastare sul campo di una squadra dove non vincerà tantissimo questa è una grande verità, però ha vinto l'andata con un canestro a tre punti di James a pochi secondi dalla fine con Gudaitis e Bertans che... So, coach, what went right in the uh, first half? We had the energy and the right attitude in the approach to the game. We have to continue, 20 minutes. Uh, 
do you need to improve uh, on uh, for the second half? Uh, and what do you in, in everything? You can improve in everything, but we have to keep the same energy, the same defensive attitude. Your feelings about this game? Feelings, good feelings, always. Whenever you play the game, it's a good feeling. Coach, uh, your feelings about this game? C'est difficile. On subit la grosse agressivité défensive de Bologne, donc on est en difficulté sur nos attaques. On défend plutôt pas trop bien, pas trop mal, mais on souffre sur leur intensité. Il faut qu'on soit capable de mieux placer nos attaques et d'être plus dur parce que Bologne nous propose beaucoup de dureté. Thank you. Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. If you just heard both coaches talking about their feelings on the game so far. Djordovic saying it's going to be about the defense playing these last 20 minutes, making sure every defensive possession is protected in the paint. While Coach Donald, you saying that his team just need to bring a little bit more energy, just need to believe in themselves a little bit. As remember, they're now trailing by four points on aggregate. Well, these home fans have been absolutely unbelievable, really brought the atmosphere here. And again, Segrafito Vitsus Bologna at one point with the powerhouse of European basketball. And they want to put themselves back on the map. And again, what better way than to do it here in the Basketball Champions League. 20 minutes to go now. Which team will be going to the Final Four? Will it be the boys from the northern suburb of Paris, Nantes 92? Or will it be the boys here in Basketball City of Bologna? We'll find out. And we're going to be set to go now for the second half. I just wonder how these two teams are going to change it up here in the second half. I mean, you look at the first half, really it's all been about Kevin Punter and Dejan Kravic. Mario Chalmers just coming in, doing a bit of defensive work. You can see the still he got at half court against Yuska Vicious. It was literally like taking candy away from a baby. He made it look that easy. And again, both these two teams now with 20 minutes to go. No tier 92. And we talked about that focus being up by eight points. Really weren't able to keep it alive in the first half. And they now find themselves trailing. Well, tempo is going to be the biggest thing now. And you can see Segrafito Vietus Bologna are going to get the first possession of the second half. And both these two teams unchanged in the lineup from the first half. And all 20 minutes to go here. Who's going to come out on top? And now hitting five three point field goals so far. Nantes really struggling from within the rainbow at the moment. Tony Taylor back in the game. He saw he got in foul trouble in the second half. Bit of a bump, puts it, hangs up in the air, gets it off the backboard. Well, what a way to start the second half now. Tony Taylor just going to work in the lane. Taylor now, that's his first two points in the game. Didn't feature a lot in the second half, second quarter, sorry, with the foul trouble. Sangler now has to kick it out. Palson, free lane, treble under the basket, bit of contact. Doesn't get it. Gant gets his own rebound. Bumps. Can't get the put back. And now Bologna can push in transition with Taylor. Taylor, bit of contact in the lane. Puts it up. Somehow, some way, he makes that layup. Tony Taylor coming out with two field goals already here in the second half. Well, Coach Djordovic, he saw the talk he had at halftime. Talking about the defensive tempo being the biggest thing for Segrafito Bologna here in the second half. And you can see Kevin Punter all over Konate. Konate in the lane, kicks out. Yuska Vicious, got to make it. In and out, can't get it. Kravich with a rebound.
Kanu now. Throws it down low to Mbaye. Backs down. Got Palsen all over him. Fades away. Fade away. Doesn't get it. Rebound by Treadwell. Well, right now, Nantes just need to keep going back at Bologna. Just keep getting in the lane. More importantly, Jeremy Sanglin needs to get himself involved, but David Kanu really just shutting him down at the moment. Treadwell now looking for the hand of Yuska Vicious. Five on the shot clock. Tries to pull up. Treadwell spins in the lane. Dish it off. Will I turn it over again? 24 second violation. Well, great defense by Segrafito Vantus Bologna. Monte 92, just like in the first quarter. Two minutes played now, still without a field goal. Taylor now comes off a screen, takes it in the lane, takes a little circus shot, sinks it. Tony Taylor has come ready to play. This man is attacking the basket, and right now, Montana 92 have to call timeout because it is the Tony Taylor show. Well, he literally had only played four minutes in the first half, got into foul trouble, and we didn't see him in the second quarter. And all of a sudden, he's come out like a man possessed. No regard for the defense. He is just going to work. Well, again, Nantes 92, only 7 for 18 from within the rainbow, while Segrafito Vitus Bologna with 16 field goals from within the rainbow. And again, it just shows that the great Charles Barkley once said, the team that scores the most points, the easiest points, sorry, is usually the team that wins. And it's looking like that right now. Well, the bench boys just showing the depth of the boys from Italy right now. 19 points coming from the bench. And only four coming from the boys from Paris. Well, now Nantes and 92 have to respond as they trail by 10 now on aggregate. Well, Hacker Palsen gets a hand of Kanati. Kanati gets away with three steps on a carry. Palsen lobs it, steals it. Kevin puts it. It's a three on one situation. Dish it off. Transition. Finishes the transition. What a fast break by Segrafino Vintus Bologna. Well, I'm at them by it. Just ran the wing like James Worthy. And if you look at it, Kevin Punter just took it down the middle like Magic Johnson. Well, Yuska Vicious got to make the three-pointer. Still can't get it. Konate with a rebound. Singlet, can he hit it? Jeremy Singlet nails the three-pointer, and he just breathes a little bit of life. It's a Nantes 92. Well, that was a big, big three-pointer by Jeremy Singlet. And Tony Taylor. Right now, it's coming out like the best player on the court. He is causing so many problems for Nantes 92. I mean, right now, he's unguardable. Anytime he gets the ball, he's getting right past his defender. Taylor now on the ball, looking for Kevin Punter. Gets a handoff. Punter in the lane, pulls up from 15 feet, gets fouled. So now Kevin Punter is going to go to the free throw line. For two shots. Well, Punter just so athletic, elevates so high on his jump shot. I mean, how do you block that without fouling him? Really, Punter, Taylor, the pair of them are just unguardable. Well, Punter makes the first free throw, and again, it's a collective effort right now from Segrafito, Vitsus, Bologna. Everybody's stepping up at the moment. Ponte, Baye, Kravich, and Taylor. So he makes a second free throw. And he puts him up by 11 on aggregate. Singlin now deals with the pressure very well. Comes off a screen with Gamble. Use the screen again. Hesitates in the lane. Kicks out. And Vinici steps back. He's got to make it. Doesn't get it. Gamble offensive rebound. 
The foul is on the ground, so it will be a fresh 14 on the shot clock for Nantes here, 92. Well, it's a great build-up play, but Invenizzi got to make the three-pointer. Situation in a game like this, you got to win or you go home. Sanglin now, alley to Gamble, Gamble kicks out, Invenizzi, another three, in and out, doesn't get it. Well, goes out of bounds on Kravich. So it will be baseline ball to Nantes, 92. Well, it's been a big quarter so far for the rebound for Nantes, but gets a hand of Yuska Vicious. Time and space, pulls up for three. This time he sinks it. Yuska Vicious cuts it down to an eight-point deficit on aggregate. Big three-pointer by the Lithuanian. Now Kevin Punta on the ball, gives it up, gets a handoff. Kravich now gives up to Konu. Low block, Kravich. Well, in the lane, no foul called. Well, Konate clearly outside the semicircle, but again, what a play by Kravich. He now moves up to 10 points, 5 for 5 from the field. Well, I'm not quite sure the replay there. There's nothing really in that, to be honest. I mean, Jeremy Singlin, obviously frustrated tonight. He hasn't been able to get going. He's two for six from the field. Has four rebounds. Only five points, but again, he's got to play through right now. They're down by 10 on aggregate. And he gets Kanate. Yuska Vicious reversed the ball to Singlin. Singlin in the lane, draws another foul. And a traveling violation is cool. Turns it over. Well, great defense by Kelvin Martin. You can see just taking Sanglin. That's what they've done tonight. That's been the game plan. Take Jeremy Sanglin out of his comfort zone. Force him to drive. Don't let him have many looks from the perimeter. And always be ready for help side. They called the Sanglin rules. Down the lane. Well, they turn it over. And Vinici with a still. And now Nantes 92 can push. And Vinici kicks out. Sanglin pulls up. Three-pointer. Doesn't get it. Well, he should have shot it without dribbling it. And now Sangrafito Virtus Bologna can just slow this one down as they lead by 10 points in aggregate. Well, so far you can see Nantes 92, 33% from the field. Martin kicks out. Good ball movement. And by a big three. Doesn't get it. Well, it goes out of bounds. And Nantes 92 will get the ball back. Well, Tony Taylor's done his job so far here in the third quarter. And now Mauro Chalmers will come back into the game. And I won't be surprised if we see Chalmers. Well, Chalmers has gotten hacky at Paulson. Konati shoots a three, gets fouled. This is the second time now. Kevin Punt has fouled a three-point shooter. So now Konate will shoot three free shots and have a chance to chip into this 10-point lead. Well, there's less contact with that one than the one we saw in the first half against Hakea Palsen. Well, Punts is going to come out of the game now. So he picks up another personal foul and they try and save him for the fourth quarter. So Tony Taylor's got to come back in. Well, Kanate misses the free throw again. Professional basketball, all the hours of practice. You just got to make your free throws, especially in a game of this magnitude. Makes a second one. Two for three from the line. Cuts it down on an eight-point deficit on aggregate. So far, Segrafito, Vietus, Bologna lead this one 128 to 120.
So now Kelvin Martin will play point guard duties for the boys from Bologna. Gets a handoff now with Chalmers. Chalmers looking in the lane. And another foul is called. That is a 13 foul for Nantes, 92. Gamble heavily got him, Brian Quale. Comes off the screen, kicks in another foul there. And that's a 14 foul. So, and again, it's right at the end of the shot clock. And you know, Julian Gamble has got to be smarter than that. Four minutes to go in the third quarter. I mean, he just goes out and takes him out. I mean, what's he doing? Coach Donadio probably not happy with that call. Oh, that play, sorry. Martin off one screen, pulls up from 15 feet. Kelvin Martin can't get it. Hacker Paulson comes up with a loose ball. Paulson crosses over, gives up to Gamble. Gamble gets a handoff. Invenizzi, another three, doesn't get it. Well, Hacker Paulson almost came up with a loose ball. And now Mario Chalmers looking for Brian Quale. And there's an injury you can see. Kelvin Martin. Just took a bit of a shot to the head. It looks like he's lost his contact lens. Down low now. Kravich fades away, puts it up, doesn't get it. In Vinici with a loose ball. And again, Nantes 92 could chip into this. Hakir Paulson looking for options, picks up his dribble. Well, Gamble keeps it alive. Julian Gamble gets fouled. And again, him and Mario Chalmers just calm things down. Great play there, great professionalism from both players. Don't let tempers or emotions get this one out of control. Fourteen thousand now for both teams. Chalmers picks up his first personal. All the way, gets the foul, gets the M1. Hacker Palsons gonna go to the free throw line to make it a three-point play. Well, he is just keeping Nantes 92 alive in this game. He's now the top scorer in the game so far with 12 points, four for eight from the field. Well, misses the free throw, and again, that's his second free throw miss of the game. Crosses over now. Taylor in the lane. Gets rejected. What a block by Julian Gamble. Yuska Vicious kicks it out. Konate, three. Transition. Hits the train of transition. And it's now a three-point ball game. Non-10-92 are back in this one. Timeout now to Segrafito Ventus Bologna. Well, the Italians were leading by as many as 14, and again, they have just hey, let this one slip get through get their get fingers. Killed. Get killed, okay? Bravic, Brian. Let's play. Let's play. Let's play. It's a long play. You can't put the play. It's a long stuff, okay? We don't need. It's not going to happen just like that. Let's keep on moving the ball and playing, playing with the, with the, with the, with the ball. Hey, don't let up, White. Do not okay. let up. Well, both teams now with... Five three-point field goals so far. Not 10, 92 hitting some of those already here in the third quarter, but Segrafito Vetus Bologna started the quarter like a house on fire, and they've just cooled down now. On the home side, you can see with 11 assists, while boys from the suburbs of Paris with only eight.
Well, now this is a big possession for Segrafedo versus Bologna. Tony Taylor is going to have to keep things under control now, playing the point guard spot, guided by Konate. Chalmers now gives it up. Down low to Kravic. Kravic down low. Well, gets rejected again, but a foul's on the ground. So it will be two shots now for Filippo Baldi Rossi. Well, Jeska Vicious now just got caught on the switch that caused the problems, but again, this is an issue for Nantes 92. They can't afford the switch. Have any mismatches in the low block? Well, Baldi makes the first free throw, and again, this is good now from Segrafito Vitus Bologna because they haven't got to the free throw line or not tonight, but anytime they do, they are making it count from the stripe. Well, doesn't get the second one, and Konate secures the rebound. Palsen now gives up to Jeska Vicious. Pulls up for another three-pointer. Doesn't get it. Gamble tries to tip it back in. Doesn't get it. Chalmers now gets a handoff. Comes off a screen. Down low. Kravich goes up. Gets fouled. And Kravich is going to go to the free throw line now for two shots. And this is such a big mobile versatile and hostile player you can see just goes straight to the basket knocks out Yuska Vicious well he makes the first one Gets a second one, and he puts him back up by seven on aggregate. Now, Kanate needs to get something going for Bologna. Sorry, for Nante 92. We'll get in the corner now. Sanglin steps back. Can he get it? Doesn't get it. Gamble with a rebound. 14 on the shot clock. Gamble's going to back down. Gamble in the lane. Gets fouled. And now Julia Gamble's going to go to the free throw line for two shots. We can see it's a huge mismatch. And of course, Segrafito versus Bologna have no choice. But to foul him, mean, Kravich can't guard him player for player in the low block. And he's just got to keep going at the defense. And Punt has come back in the game now. That's a bit of a risky move by Bologna. The gamble just gets the free throw to drop. Well, they brought Kevin Punter back in with a minute 24 to go, and he's got three fouls. I mean, pick your poison, take your chances if you want. Kevin Punter, you want this guy in the fourth quarter. If he picks up another foul now, he'll have four going into the fourth. And now comes off a screen. Well, Quali just throws it away. Kravich can't keep it alive. Well, again, just threw it right, right away. I mean, risky pass. And again, Segrafito Vitsis Bologna just don't take care of the basketball. Now, Nantet, 92, trying to get the ball to Jeremy Singlin. Palsen. Oh, they foul again. It looks like it's on Julian Gamble. 
Well, it's the second time tonight Julian Gamble has set an illegal screen again. Game like this, you can't afford for mess ups like that. You just got to stand still, let the player come off the screen. And he's just cost his team with that turnover. Tony Taylor now throws it down low to Kravich. Kravich looking for the handoff. Gets a handoff now. Taylor pulls up. Eight feet, six to jump shot. Well, oh, he's got eight points. He scored them all there in the third quarter. Slingler now comes off a screen. Konati now dribbling. No in. Vinici gives up to Sanglin. Sanglin had the shot, didn't take it. Makes a bit of contact, goes up. And now Jeremy Slingland's going to go to the free throw line now for two shots. Well, it's a smart move. Got him up in the air. Just a bit of contact. Try to throw up a teardrop, but nowhere near the basket. But Jeremy Slingland will shoot these two free throws. Well, Slingland was their best player in the last game. He had 16 points. He was 5 for 11 from the field. 1 for 4 from the perimeter. 5 for 5 from the free throw line. He's been very quiet tonight, and that's been down to the defense. In and out on the second free throw. Chalmers now, end of the quarter, it's going to go all the way, makes a bit of contact, puts it up, doesn't get it, goes between the legs. Well, it will be Segrafito Vincius Bologna ball. With nine tenths of a second to go here in the third quarter. Just what can they do now? No time to dribble it. It's got to be a catch and shoot. Chalmers throws it up, gets rejected by Invenizzi. And ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the third one, it is the boys here from Italy. Segrafito, Vincius, Bologna lead this one 58 to 44. They win by six points so far. Winning by six points on aggregate. Well, Chalmers there trying to get the shot at the end of the third quarter. In Vinici, just denying him. Well, the boys from Northern France, Northern Paris, sorry. Trail this one by six points on aggregate. One quarter to go. Who's going to go into the final four? We'll find out at the end of this quarter. Well, one quarter to go right now. Who's going to come out victorious? Will Nantes 92 come back from a six-point deficit? Will Segrafino Virtus Bologna hold on? Hacker Palsen now 10 on the shot clock. Draws a foul on Mario Chalmers.
Well, second personal foul now, Mara Chalmers. Well, they throw it away. Jeremy Singlin tried to get to Hacker Palson, and he just throws the basketball away. Well, now, Segrafito Virtus Bologna can capitalize. And just listen to these fans right now. Chalmers now takes in the lane, draws a foul on Konate. Well, that was the poor pass, but Palson wasn't even really looking to go for it. Well, that's now the third foul for Konate, so he's got to be smarter than that. Taylor now in the lane. Well, Taylor travels with it. Great call by the official. Took three steps after he caught it. Julian Gamble now. You can see what Gamble's doing every time he comes out. Got to be careful, though. Doesn't want to get called for another foul. Well, Kevin Punta back in the game. Remember, he picked up three fouls in the third quarter. They took him out, but they subbed him back in with two minutes to go, which I thought was a little bit risky. And your best player's got three fouls. You got to save him for the fourth quarter. Singlin now guarded by Calvin Martin. Gives up to Konate. Palson in the lane. Hackett Palson gets rejected, but they call the goaltending. Well, Hackett Palson, 16 points so far in the game. He's just carrying Nantea 92 on his back. Hesitates, takes it in with his left. Well, it's a great call by the officials. Dan Kravich try to come up and block it. Chalmers now gives up to Kravich. Kravich down low, and Baez got to go up with it. Too easy in the lane. Well, that's a smart move, and that's the best play of the game, especially a one-two punch we've seen from the big men. And Baez now goes up to nine. Palson on the ball. Palson splits the defense, puts up a teardrop off the backboard. Hacker Palson is making a count in crunch time. He is keeping Nante 92 in this one. Well, he now moves up to 18 points. He's 6 for 10 from the field. Punter now catches it. Tries to go baseline. Pulls up the jump shot. Doesn't get it. Gamble tries to keep it alive. Somehow, someway, Julian Gamble keeps that one in. Well, Julian Gamble just doing the, the dirty work right now. Invenizzi, big three, but the foul is called. Well, if that's on Kelvin Martin, that's his fourth personal foul of the game. Well, that's what Jeremy Singlin needs to do right now. Every time he gets the ball, he's just got to go at the defense. Well, Brian Quale checks back into the game. And again, when Quale's on the court, usually Nantes go to work in the low block. So this could be an opportunity now for Nantes. Konate now gets a handoff with Jeremy Singlin. Singlin takes it in with the lane. Gets a handoff. Invenizzi, big three. Doesn't get it. Well, it was a good look. But he just didn't make it. Well, Segrafito, Vitus Bologna, leading this one by four in aggregate. In the lane. And Bayer gets the M1. He's going to go to the free throw line now to make it a three point play. What a play by Amath and Bayer. This place just absolutely erupted when he got the M1. I mean, look at this. Takes in the lane. I mean, this guy's just too big and strong. Six foot nine, just going to work. Well, Joska Vicious now has come back into the game for Nante 92, probably just to give him a little bit more effort from the perimeter. That's what they need now is more three point shooters. Makes a three point play now, puts him up by seven on aggregate. Well, we got a timeout now. There's no 10 92. Have to talk this one over. Down by seven with 7.42 to go here. Can they save their season? Julian. Adas is here. Julian is here. Trey is here. Oak is here. 
Ok Julian, un bon écran pour Adas. Adas, si tu as la balle. Well, the bench has been a big difference in this game so far. Not here, unable to get more than 10 points from that bench. But Bologna able to get more than 20. But again, look at the points in the paint so far. Segrafito Bologna, 40, 40 points within the lane. On Nantes 92, only 18. Right now would be a good time to put Julian Gamble and Demetrius Trebel both out there. And who the style they play, they want four perimeter players with one big man. I mean, you can't lose in this one. Anytime you go in for an offensive shot, you got two big physical players there going for offensive rebounds. Now Jeremy Singler's going to have to bring the ball up. It's a big, big possession for Nuts here, 92. Yoskovic just comes off a screen. Well, forced a three up. And again, draws a foul. So Yoskovic will shoot three free throws. Well, that was a smart play by the Lithuanian. Where he comes off the screen. He knows Taylor's following him. Well, that is a smarter play you'll ever see. Imagine if he made the M1. Taylor picks up his third personal foul. Makes the first free throw. Well, there you can see the traveling contingent of Nantes 92 fans coming, making the journey from the northern suburb of Paris. Makes the second one. Makes all three of them. Cuts you down to a four-point deficit. Nantes 92 still in this one. Well, Taylor crosses over, gets away with a push-off, kicks out in the lane. And Bayer kicks it out. Hackett pulls him with a still. No, sir, because he's diving on the floor. Well, it's a jump ball situation now. Well, it's going to go back to Segrafito, Virtus Bologna. Well, Hackett Palson has got to come up with that, but look at that for a defensive effort. Tony Taylor diving on the floor, and that's a difference between a player that wants to go home for the summer and another one that just wants to get to the Final Four. Five on the shot clock now. This is Kevin Punter time. Punter pulls up, big three, doesn't get it. Treble, can he secure it? Out of bounds. It will be not 10, 92 ball. Well, now this is another big possession. Down by four with under seven minutes to go. Can they chip into it? Gives up the gamble. Well, Jeska Vicious gets away with a push off. Palson goes in. Palson off the backboard, doesn't get it. Big rebound by Brian Quale. And now Taylor, transition, gives up. Punter in the lane. Punter hangs in the air, airballs it. Treble of the rebound. Senglin now comes off a screen, reverse the Treadwell. Jeska Vicious. Well, another offensive foul set. I'm not sure they called that one. Was it called in Hacker Palson or? It was on Hacker Palson. Well, Palson, silly foul to give away because Jeska Vicious makes the three pointer. Now Tony Taylor checks out of the game and Mario Chalmers is going to come back into this one. Well, Palson picks up his third personal foul, but. That's the least of their concerns. Well, he's wide open, but they turn it over again. Sagrafito Virtus Bologna are just gifted Nanterre in, back in this game. Sanglin steps back 15 feet. Jeremy Sanglin nails it. Two point ball game. Well, he is keeping them alive.
Now Mero Chalmers on the ball, got it by Treadwell. Crosses over, Chalmers bumps in the lane. Chalmers fades away, doesn't get it. And now, Nante 92 can tie it up with a two. They can beat the lead with a three. Sanglin throws it away. Transition, what have we got? Lift off, it's a throwdown, and he hangs on the rim. Well, he puts Segrafino Vitus Polanya, but look at this, it is sky fly. He believes he can fly. And now big possession, pulls up, big three, doesn't get it. Well, again, Yuska Vicious tried to go for the three-pointer, didn't get it. And now Segrafino Vitus Polanya can build on the lead. Punter now heavily got it. Gives up to Mario Chalmers. Chalmers reaching for the shot clock. Chalmers contact, no foul called. Well, now Jeremy Slingland on the ball. Heavily got it yet again. Gives up to Hacker Palson. Palson in the lane. Turns it over. Well, same situation. This time it's Canoe. Monster dunk in transition. Six point lead to Segrafino Vertus Bologna. Well, breakaway, it looked cool, but he hopped up and away. Big time lead now to the home team. I mean, that is just a bigger play as it gets on the defensive end. And Coach Jordanovic, he talked about the defense. Well, two turnovers have just cost it for Nantes 92. Well, Nantes 92 have done better with the second chance points going in. They got 12 of those so far. Well, Segrevitovic is Bologna only with nine, but again, both teams really going at it. But look at that, Bologna, 20 points from the turnovers. Why, Nantes 92 only 10. Just making a difference in transition. Well, these home fans have been absolutely outstanding in this game. They've been up, up, and away from the beginning to end. And just listen to them right now. Well, 4.23 to go here so far in the fourth quarter. As Segrafito Vetus Bologna lead this one by six. And Hacker Palsen draws the foul. And that's the first team foul for Bologna here in the fourth quarter. It's on Kevin Punt. It's his fourth foul of the game. Well, one more and he's out of here. Well, they take Kevin Punt out of the game and they bring in Tony Taylor. And they got Mario Chalmers in the backcourt. Well, into Hacker Palsen now. Palson off the screen. Palson kicks out. Sanglin, big three. Jeremy Sanglin, six a huge three pointer. And he cuts it down to a three point ball game. Three point. Well, that is just a bigger three as it gets. We talked about Sanglin being quiet tonight. Man, what a time to hit a big shot. Well, they've caught a foul. I'm not sure who it's on, if it's on Hacker Palson. And there you can see, look at that. Mario Chalmers, unhappy, but just keeps his cool. Hacker Palson picks up his fourth personal. Well, that's just a silly foul now for Treble to give away, because now they're going to go to the free throw line for two shots. Again, why is he out there guarding him that close? I mean, you want to give just a bit of space. I mean, he's not Reggie Miller. He's not going to shoot it out there. Uh, 
Well, he makes the first free throw. Puts him up by four in aggregate. Makes it two for two from the stripe. And it's a five point lead now for Segrafito Virtus Bologna, 144 to 139. Well, Jeremy Singler now hit a big three in the last possession, but they're really going to need him to step up here in this fourth quarter. Jeskovic just comes off a screen, gives up the hacker Palsen, looking for a handoff. Sanglin, five on the shot clock, got to get something going in the basket. Sanglin fades away, doesn't get it. Big rebound now, 3.30 to go here in the fourth quarter. Bologna lead this one by five on aggregate. Well, Taylor now comes off a screen, gives up. Martin had the three, didn't take it. Well, picked up his dribble, stepped out of bounds. Quale down low, got to shoot it. Two on the shot clock, takes the shot, doesn't get it. And now Sanglin comes up with a loose ball. No foul called. And now Segrafito Vietus Bologna with three minutes to go. Get it. Martin had the three, goes baseline. Quale turns it over. Well, Brian Quale now just making some costly errors there. And they give it up to Jeremy Sanglin now. 10 on the shot clock. Pick and roll with Trebwell. Sanglin turns it over. Really bad play. And now Kelvin Martin does the smart thing. Slows this one down. And he gives it up to Mero Chalmers. Down low to Mbaia. Palsen hands up in the air, goes up, doesn't get it, but he goes in for the follow-up, and Brian Quale makes amends. Well, he makes up for it now. Seven-point lead with two minutes to go. Singlin now on the ball. Pick and roll with Trebwell. Kicks out. Konate's got to make it. Way off the mark. Rebound by Kelvin Martin. And now Segrafito Vietos Bologna with all the tempo, momentum, seven point lead. 136 to go here in the fourth. Crosses over. Chalmers. Brian Qualley under the basket. Doesn't get it. And now Nantel with another chance to get back in this. Down low, Treadwell, triple teamed, kicks out. And now he's going to go to the free throw line for two shots. I mean, literally, the man got triple teamed. Still able to get a pass out to Jeska Vicious. Well, Kanate is going to go to the bench. Along with Brian Quale and Kelvin Martin. Misses the first free throw. Well, down by seven with 117 to go here. <sighs> Nothing need to be said, really. Just got to make your free throws. Misses both of them. And Hackett Paulson almost coming up with a steal. Well, as we saw already this evening, Ike, the champions, losing to Broj Bamberg. Telling that Giants Antwerp, surprising the whole entire world. Make it to the Final Four. Iberostar Tenerife, the very first ever champions of the Champions League. Look like they're on their way. Are we about to see the new boys? Are we about to see Virtus Bologna there? 
Three-pointer, punts up, doesn't get it. Trail by with a rebound, and with a minute to go, not 92 trail by seven. Trebell crosses over, goes all the way to the basket, and he's fouled, and he'll go to the free throw line now for two shots. And it looks like he's hurt himself in the process. Well, crosses over. That's a hard fall to the ground, but strong move nonetheless. Well, he missed his last two free throws, and it's simple as he's got to make these two. I think what they're trying to decide is, should that be an M1? Because it does look like the ball hit the free throw, the backboard, sorry. Question is, does the basketball hit the backboard before it's blocked? Yeah, for me, that's a goaltending. So that should be an M1 with a free throw. Great call by the official. So great play. An M1 and a chance to cut it down to a four-point ball game. Well, that was my initial thought was, was it an M1? But you know, a play like that happens so fast and pulls up. And the way the players react, it's really hard to see. And that's the great thing about a replay. But this is now a big, big free throw. Down by five with 49 seconds to go. He's got to make this free throw. All the nerves, the pressure, but simply put all the hours, the experience, the blood, sweat, and tears. Got to make it. Doesn't get it. Konate, offensive rebound. And Nantes with another chance now. Well, down by five. Sanglin thought about the three, gives up to Paulson. Paulson hangs in the air, gets blocked. Trebwell now goes out of bounds, so it will be Nanterre ball again. Well, Nanterre are like cats with nine lives. They just keep getting more and more chances. Well, just goes out of bounds. Well, did hit the line, so great call by the official. Well, that's now Kravitz's second block of the game. Now, if you're not tap, do you go for the three or do you get a quick, easy basket? I mean, really, you got to go whatever's best. The good thing for Nantes is they get a quick basket. It's over 24 seconds, so they have a chance to play defense. So there were seven seconds on the shot clock now. Well, it's less than that, actually. There's the block. Looks like there's 1.8 seconds left. So it looks like they're going to give it 1.4, probably my guess. The seven seconds there on the shot clock, but it... One point four, one point five seconds on the shot clock, Shawabi's left.
Well, that's where the ball hits the floor, but my guess is between 1.4 and 1.5. So the timeout. Well, they're giving it nine, ten seconds left. That's even more strange. I mean, that didn't look like what was left on the clock when they showed the replay. So. That's correct there. 1.4 now. That's what was left on the clock. So there is time for a dribble, but they got to get it off quickly. Juskovic has got to shoot it, throws it up, doesn't get it, and they secure the rebound. Well, now they got a foul, and they foul Mario Chalmers. Well, did well to get the shot off with 1.4. Just wasn't able to hit it. Well, so unlucky. But again, he did so well. Well, there you can see Kravich just knocks over Treble. I mean, that's a foul for me as well, but Hakia Palsen fouls out of the game. Makes the first one. Well, he's already got two NBA championships to his name. Possibly now could be on the way to get in a basketball Champions League ring. Makes the second one. Well, Segrafito Vietus Bologna won the FIBA Euro Challenge back in 2009. Historically won many FIBA Supporter Cups. And ladies and gentlemen, I think it's fair to say, that the way this is going now, that Segrafito Vietus Bologna are going to another Final Four. Punta, three, transition, doesn't get it. Offensive rebound. Goes out of bounds, and it will be a baseline ball now to Segrafito Vietus Bologna. Basketball city as it's known here in Europe. A city with two teams, but tonight it's about one team in black and white. Segrafito Vietus Bologna. Just listen to these fans. All season, the new boys on the block have been making noise. And again, ladies and gentlemen, just listen to these fans, because at the end of this one, Segrevito, Vitus, Bologna are on their way to the Final Four. They can book the tickets. They can start to celebrate. Basketball City is back on the map. A team with so much history is about to make history again. Pros Bamberg are on their way. Telling the Giants Antwerp are on their way. And now, Segrevito, Vitus, Bologna are also joining them at the final four of the basketball champions league well what a game it was not 10 92 kept fighting back but in the end it just wasn't enough and as i said before the game to the boys from italy in boca lupo in the mouth of the wolf the famous saying here and in the end, it was the black and white team, Segrafito Vietus Bologna, who are about to set a new chapter in their historical pathway here in basketball. Nantes 92 really turned their season around in the second half of the regular season. And we'll be seeing them next season, that's for sure. What a season it's been for Coach Donadieu, but it's now time for them to go home because it's all about the black and whites now. They are going to the Final Four. Just listen to those fans. Well, they were down by eight before this game. They came back. Such a wonderful season. And they turned it around tonight. They dominated from start to finish. And it's not just a one-man show. It's not just the Kevin Punter show. It's everybody. It's Collective. It's Tony Taylor. It's Brian Quale. It's Kravich. It's the whole unit. It's Jordanovich. Everybody pitches in. It's even the fans. 
on Segrafito Vietus Bologna. Only 28% from the perimeter. But they came through 24 for 47 but within the rainbow. Winning the rebounds. 39 to 36. Nine steals in the game. Really went the full way. And those fans. Next season, both teams here in Bologna will be competing against each other in the Italian League. But just maybe next year when they play each other, Segrafito Vincius Bologna can sing right at them that maybe they might have a championship here in Europe. Well, Hake Pelson was a tough scorer for Nantes, 92 with 18, but other players just didn't step up in the end. Mario Chalmers with three steals. Also had three turnovers, but Mbaya was their tough scorer with 16. Kravich had 12. Kevin Punter was on fire in the first half, only had nine. And that's what it means to them. They are on their way to the Final Four. Djordovic has led them to a Final Four. Serbia to a FIBA World Cup. And who knows, maybe he can have a bit of gold in both. Job done. Came here in 2019. One mission, one plan. But it's not over yet. The job just isn't quite finished yet. The job now is to come home with the title. Well, what a historical moment it is right now for Segrafito Vitus Bologna, a club that's coached the greats. Many NBA champions have played for this team. Many greats have coached this team. As much history as they've got, as many accolades, as trophies, they possibly could add one more to the cabinet. Well, Bamberg will take on Virtus Bologna, or Tenerife will take on everybody's surprise dark horse, Tona Giants Antwerp. But my word, ladies and gentlemen, what a season it's been so far here in the Basketball Champions League. Quarterfinals done, regular season done. It's now time for the Final Four, the biggest event here in Europe, the best competition, the greatest basketball, the Basketball Champions League. No other better basketball you can see here in Europe. And they are on their way, those four teams. What a Final Four it's going to be. What an atmosphere it's was tonight. And what an atmosphere it's going to be. Oh, what a season it's been. But ladies and gentlemen, you know, you talk about each team each year having that one superstar player. But this Segrafito Virtus Bologna team, it's as many superstars. It's a dream team, if you like. And they'll be up against Broj Bamberg. Well, Hakia Palsen was their best player tonight. Jeremy Slingen hit a few big shots down the run, but wasn't as good as he's been in the regular season. But credit to Nantes 92. Had many chances to get back in it. But in the end, it just wasn't enough. Well, Final Four will be coming up soon. Venue yet to be decided. But we know one thing for sure. Four teams. One team from Belgium. One team from Spain. One team from Italy. And one team from Germany. Remember, the greatest basketball here in Europe is the Basketball Champions League. We'll see it for the Final Four soon. But right now, 
here in Basketball City. One team will be celebrating a Final Four trip. We thank you for joining us this season. It's been a great year, but right now, it's good night from FIBA.